The good always win while the evil stand defeated. Such is the case for most K-drama series that we binged on all night. However, newer K-dramas have taken on new kinds of endings, including those where the villains triumph in the end. And today, we are ticking down five series where it's the villains that got the final laugh. Number one, Strangers from Hell. Horror K-drama Strangers from Hell marks MC Wan's return from the army and is also the first on-screen villain role of Grim Reaper Lee Dong-wook. The series revolves around the stifling life of the male lead Jong-woo, who is from a poor family background with a sick brother, a dependent mother, a failed career in writing, a heartless girlfriend, and a bad office job in Seoul. Because of his tight financial status, our male lead Jong-woo has to live temporarily in the Eden, a shabby dormitory with strange and creepy neighbors. Among those neighbors was the dentist, So Moon-jo, who looks all pristine, yet enjoyed torturing and killing people in cold blood. He committed all these crimes with the help of the dorm's many residents, and seemed to have a strange obsession with our male lead Jong-woo. Throughout the series, we get to see Jong-woo struggling to survive and retain his sanity. His girlfriend never believes him, his boss looks down on him, and the series' villain is always there, planting cruel ideas in his head. Well, if you hoped that the quiet and timid male lead could maintain his good nature to the end, then maybe you should consider turning off the screen. Because in the last episode, Zhang Wu was like a buried bomb that was finally activated. He frantically killed four people, including So Moon Jo. This makes villain So Moon Jo the winner of the series, because despite his death, he had succeeded in turning Zhang Wu into a psychopath himself. This was made very clear in Moon Jo's final words to Zhang Wu. You are the best masterpiece I ever created. Number two. The smile has left your eyes. Well, at least the male lead survived in Strangers from Hell, is what I'd say to warn you about the smile has left your eyes. Because this time, the antagonist won for sure, while both of our protagonists died together. As unfortunate children, the male lead Mu Young and the female lead Jin Kang have to go through a lot of ups and downs, before finally managing to love and heal each other. Yet, the two of them never had time for true happiness because the moment they learned of their painful past was also the end of their lives. And both were killed by the Zhang family, led by the villain Zhang Seran. Zhang Seran is an atypical villain. She is evil not out of jealousy nor revenge. Rather, she just doesn't have morals, and repeatedly puts Mu Young in terrible situations for her own amusement. She wants to find someone as twisted as herself, and is ultimately disappointed when she realizes Mu Young is not that person. So she ruined our male lead, lying that he and his love are siblings, and their relationship is of wrongful nature. She even cruelly asked him, did you, perhaps, sleep together not knowing that? In the end, Mu Young managed to kill Seiran, but became a murderer and a monster himself. He later learned that her words were all lies, but by then, nothing could be recovered. The series closes with our main couple being shot by Seiran's assistant, and a belated declaration of love after a lifetime of suffering. Seiran might be dead, but she succeeded in the end, triumphing as the ultimate villain. Number three, Vagabond. The ending of Vagabond is just pure flabbergasted because there's no knowing what will happen next. And the villain Edward Puck had so far got what he wanted. If you really think about it, all of Edward's evil intentions were achieved. He manipulated the whole Korean politics through the name of the prime minister. He pushed to change the political system and he managed to end all investigations regarding the plane disaster that he prompted at the start of the series. Meanwhile, the male lead Cha dal -gun only discovered Edward's true nature in the very last episodes, having put his trust in the wrong person the entire time. He was captured, taken to a warehouse, and set on fire. Our charming male lead even had to fake his own death, infiltrated the Black Sun mercenary squad, and killed people without fear. The female lead, Go ha -ri, was no better, as she was deeply saddened by the death of dal -gun. She made a deal with Jessica to become a Curia lobbyist and went into exile to seek revenge for her lover. And at the final scene before the series closes, we see Dalgun put the gun to Harvey's head, trembling and questioning her appearance. Shoot the target right now. It takes shot. While Vagabond leaves clues to a second season, it's safe to assume that Edward Park has emerged as the victor for now. Number four, Cheese in the Trap. 
The 2018 K-drama Cheese in the Trap leaves many viewers angry over its infuriating finale. After spending much of the series in an awkward relationship, the female lead Hong Sol ended up miserable and struggling in her life. With the male lead Yu Jung breaking up with her and the second male lead Bak In Ho leaving her for being ashamed of his sister's actions. To make matters worse, it seems that Hong Sol is sending Yu Jung emails after being ghosted for years, until he finally opened one, making room for an open ending. But wait, what does all this have to do with the villain winning? Well, Cheese in the Trap doesn't introduce a clear cut villain, but there's one that fits the mold, and that's the incredibly selfish and crazy Bak In Ha, the sister of the second male lead. In the series, we witnessed her insane behaviors. From pushing Hong Sol into traffic, gold digging, emotionally abusing, to downright violent fighting. And yet, she never paid for her crimes, continued with her selfish attitude, and even started seeing Ha Jae Won, a nice guy that pampered her. Obviously, we can spot some remarkable contrast. Our protagonist Hong Sol ended up worse, while the villain was happy in the end. It seems that, yet again, the antagonist had been the victor. Number 5. Tale of Noctu Finally, we are getting to our final series. But while the villain still wins, Tale of Noctu is a peculiar case. This time, the villain and the protagonist both get what they wanted, with something lost obviously, but still a win-win situation nonetheless. In particular, as the series ended, the villain Chao Yul Mu reveals to the king that he had been the child predicted to overthrow the throne. This means that the king had mistakenly framed his own child Noctu and tried to kill his son because of one simple misunderstanding. Thankfully, a guard overheard the king's plan, and our protagonist Noctu manages to live. His life was detached from the king and the palace, and he has no intention to return. That's why, even after learning that he was the prince, Noctu turned on his heels, leaving the fancy palace and instead got together with the female lead Dongju, far, far away. Meanwhile, the villain Yulmu also got what he wanted. He finished the king and got the throne for himself. The next morning, he walks into the palace, takes his seat, and a grin spreads all over his face. Yulmu even spared the old queen, per King Guangke's final request, and released her back to her rightful family. There, she reunited with Noctu, now happily married and free from all the politics. The villain may win in this case, but it is really the best scenario for all the characters. And that's the list. Do you like it when the villains win for once? Do you know of any other series that have the same type of ending? Please let us know in the comment section. And if you want more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe to Polydrama. We'll come back soon. See ya!